So, uh, have you ever been wronged by anybody? <laughs> anybody here? Yes. You? Yes. Uh, many, many times. It's, that's not the kind of question you have to really ask for an answer because there's nobody who hasn't been wronged by someone. <coughs> and even worse to admit, there's very few of us, if any, that have ever gone through their entire life without wronging someone else. So the question is, what do you do? What do you do? Do you, uh, do you get back at them? Do you punch them? When I was a kid, if someone insulted me, I'd hit them. <laughs> you know, um, do you just refuse to forgive someone, have a grudge for 20, 30, 50 years? Is that what you're supposed to do? It's happened in churches. But uh, that's not what God wants us to do, is it? I mean, I, I know Joseph has been talked about a lot in here, but I kind of want to avoid using him again. But the fact is, he's one of the best examples of forgiveness. <laughs> you know, not you know, his brothers betrayed him, jumped him, sold him into slavery, and eventually he got in a position where he could get really good revenge on them, or bad revenge. But uh, that isn't what he did, is it? And. Uh, is on the screen in Genesis 50. Yeah, Genesis 50, 20. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. He realized that God had turned, turned the situation around. What they had done meaning bad, God turned around. And he managed to forgive them. And uh, I just think that's amazing thing. I'd like to look at some of the things that God tells us. I'm going to look in the, the book of Matthew. Chapter 5. Start with verse 38. <coughs> Jesus had a lot to say about a lot of things, including forgiveness. That's just a small part of the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Well, we've heard that. And that was Old Testament the law. But, uh, but uh, Jesus says, But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on the right cheek, Punch him back? No. Whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him, turn the other <coughs> to him also. Just that alone. How do you do that? I mean, just, just think about it. If someone walked up to you and it's just slapping you, you just turn your cheek to them. Now, this, is a, this, these kind of things are things you can't do without the Spirit of God. I know my natural uh, instinct if someone's coming up to me to hit me, <laughs> hit them back harder. <laughs> Make it count. Yeah. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, what do you do if someone's trying to sue you and take away your tunic? Take away your coat. Give him your shirt off your back. Let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, you know what that was about? Roman soldiers could actually make someone go with them a mile carrying their stuff. They could compel them literally. That was in their law, they could. And so, uh, what does he say to that? If the Roman soldier goes up to you to make you, uh, to make you carry something for him for a mile, what does he say? Take it too. Be happy and carry it another mile. Mm -hmm. Go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, turn not away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Well, that's, uh, that's more earthly wisdom. Huh? <laughs> but that's not what Jesus called us to do. But I say to you, love your enemies. 
You know, like I said at the beginning, anyone done you wrong? Anyone decide to qualify as your enemy? Mm-hmm. How? What do you do? According to Jesus, you love your enemies. That means you're not plotting against them. That means you're not trying to destroy them. <laughs> Excuse Bless me. You. Bless you. Bless those who curse you. Okay. Has anybody ever had someone curse you? Cuss you out? <laughs> and what do you want to do? say? Uh, same back to you? <laughs> you know. But you're supposed to bless them who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Uh, that's not an easy thing. Have you ever been in a position where you had to do something good for someone who hated you? Yeah. Probably most employees get in that position <laughs> at some point. But, uh, but he's not saying to do it because you're being forced to. That's not what Jesus is saying. He's saying that's what we should do. We're supposed to love everybody. We're supposed to uh, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for those? Oh, I've got a good prayer for them. Lord, send a, a lightning bolt down from heaven. That's the easy way out. Uh, that's not what uh, he's meaning, though. <laughs> I know, uh, Esther, you like to bless those who <laughs> curse you, but but not bless them with your cane. <laughs> and why do you do that? Why should you do that? But Jesus told you to. Well, that's a very good reason to do anything, <laughs> even if you God has to have the glory that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? I ain't seen that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, there's supposed to be a difference. The saved people people that God has saved we're supposed to be a light to the world are we a light to the world if we're just the same as everybody else you do something to me I'll get you back <laughs> you know why be like everybody else if you're born to stand out mm-hmm. yes and that is what we're supposed to do is stand out and if you greet your brethren only what do you do more than others do not the tax, mm-hmm. even tax collectors do so. Therefore you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. I don't understand that last verse because doesn't he say, doesn't he say no one's perfect but God? Or or does it mean try to be, try to be? It's kind of mm-hmm. man meaning the word complete mm-hmm. in this particular area. Gotcha, yeah, okay. It's not the entire life because God knows mm-hmm. that. Oh, okay. In this area, try to be as perfect as you can. Okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. And then uh, the next verse we're going to look at is uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 14. You see, uh, it's part of the Lord's Prayer. Many people are familiar with that. Many people have that memorized. How few practice it? Yeah, we'll just do the whole for whole prayer in this manner. Therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Well, if you want to do it, King James, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See, what was part of that? Forgive us our debts as what? We forgive, we our, forgive debtors. our debtors. Yes, and what did he say afterwards? For if you forgive men of their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your, your trespasses. 
I mean, that's an interesting thing. It, it, it's a very good reason to forgive, isn't it? You know, it's, it's amazing to me. It's one thing someone does something wrong to you and you're mad for a while. But forever and ever, and I've seen so many people that will keep grudges going year after year after year after year while they're in church, while they're saying they're a Christian. <laughs> you know, that's... That's an amazing thing that I've seen. It's a terrible thing, but it does amaze me. Because the one we're trying to be like doesn't do that, does he? In Psalm chapter 86, it tells a different story about God himself, the one who we're trying to be like. Isn't that what a Christian's supposed to do? Be like the Lord? Psalm 86, 5. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all who call upon you. Are we ready to forgive? He's, he's what we're trying to be like, right? Are we ready to forgive? Are we compassionate? Now uh, we'll go go back to uh, Matthew again chapter 7 this time to uh, verse 12 it's something that everybody yeah, chapter 7 verse 12 it's uh, something that everybody knows but do we really apply it to ourselves that's a, that's a question it's called the golden rule anybody know about what that says do unto others as you would have them do unto you Yes, yeah, so uh, when you when you really think about about that, uh, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Do you want, if you have made a mistake, you you have done something wrong, you have wronged someone. Do you want them to forgive you? Mm -hmm. You know, all of us have done wrong. <laughs> we wanted God to forgive us. We want. Fellow man to forgive us. Now if you were meant now if you were meaning to do wrong and you were trying to just be mean to him, you could give a flying yeah. flip. Yeah, that's true enough. And maybe There's at some the time. That are like that. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Sometimes sometimes people are totally unrepentant of it. But even sometimes people that are like that years down the road will feel bad about what they did. Yes. Mm. And there isn't enough for them. And there is some, there is an interesting thing to holding a grudge, holding anger, because I've done that before, held lots of anger against certain people. And do you know who was hurt by the anger that I was holding for these people? Not those yeah. people. Yeah. It was just hurting me. It was causing you stress. Yes, it was just hurting me. Just keep that fire going. <laughs> People I ain't seen in years, and I just <laughs> rises up. Mm -hmm, just rises up. That's you know I'm not necessarily one who's for going to people who haven't apologized or anything and telling them you forgive them. Not necessarily. Sometimes there are circumstances to do that, but you should forgive them and be ready to if they ever come and ask. You've already forgiven them, but. Uh, holding grudges, just being mad at people, because you know something I've noticed about a lot of offenses people give? I know myself, usually my offenses are accidental. You know, you, usually if I offend someone it wasn't, I wasn't me meaning to, just may have said something out of turn, it's just... <laughs> you know what they say about accidents, they're 99% preventable. Oh yes, and I'm not... Ex and so. But what I'm saying is you should view that with other people, too. They might not have meant it. You know, you, they say something, you took the wrong way. It's, you know, or... I know it's not everyone, but, you know... But, uh... If you just... I remember one time there was someone who was mad at me for a very long time. Because as a kid, I had accidentally, I went through the door of the church, one of those two-way doors, and apparently, it had, like, 
hit this woman. I was just going around. I was a kid, just going around about my business. I didn't, I didn't know about it until years later. <laughs> a person said it. She walked me in the head. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so that person had held a grudge for <laughs> so long. Of course, I might hadn't even realized. We're not supposed to carry around all this. And uh, if we want to be forgiven, then forgive others. That's the golden rule. As you want others to do you, do them. Uh, Matthew chapter 18. Verses uh, 21 through 35. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. That's a question, not a statement. Yes, it is a question. Up to seven times? Mm -hmm, there is a question mark at the end of it. <laughs> well, uh, so, uh, so he's at, so Peter is asking Jesus, okay. Okay, I, I get it. You're saying to forgive. You know, this isn't... You know, he was there to hear the Sermon on the Mount. He said, okay, Jesus is talking about forgiveness. But uh, how many times do I do that? Hmm? Seven times? So I'm just keeping track? <laughs> you know? You just did number six, buddy. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> no, it's two more times. Yeah, you just... Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay. So up to seven times? Jesus said to him in verse 22, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Could you imagine Peter going, Oh God, I gotta do this again and again and again? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, it's uh, yeah, up to 70 times 7, so uh, 490. So what you need to do is keep a notebook with you and write, <laughs> keep number. No, that's not, that wasn't his point. Most people aren't going to go that far anyway. No. I could Most never keep track. Most it's over with. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do is forgive. You're not supposed to really. The idea wasn't that you keep track. This is 400. The idea was you'd forget about it. Yes. There is no way I could really keep track of 490 times one person offended me. It's like my ties in the back. I stopped counting after 100. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, bragging. After no, how many? I'm not, I'm after, not bragging. After how many? Mm -hmm. You stopped one. going? Yeah. I'm kidding. Mm hmm. Jeffrey. So then. Uh, so then uh, Jesus said to him, Oh, wait a minute. Okay. First, yeah, verse 23. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But he was not able to pay. His master commanded that he be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. The sir, that is basically an outrageous amount of money that he could never pay. That's all you really need to know. You owe a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the New Living says millions of dollars, actually. <laughs> but uh, the point being, it was something, there's no way he could pay it. I'll give you a penny a day for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. You know, uh, just like uh, we went to the Lord, we repented. We, And the Lord forgave us. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and uh, it literally says a few thousand dollars. What's denarii? It's money. Mm -hmm. Jewish money. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a few thousand dollars, basically. 
uh, in today's, but not yes. back then. Mm -hmm. Probably a few hundred back then. Anyway, you know, the point being, it was much less, much, much less than this guy was forgiven. So, he laid his hands on him and took him by the throat saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Similar from, does that uh, speech remind you of another speech? Yeah, you <laughs> Yeah. And he would not, but he went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been, been done, they were very grieved. Why were they grieved? It could happen to them easily. Well, they were grieved because they knew this guy had been <laughs> forgiven. Just forgiven of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so they were grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have laid or have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. You know, when you've been forgiven, you should forgive. Yes. And we've all been forgiven. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. <laughs> We should realize that God has had mercy on us. We should have mercy on others. It's, a, it's pretty much impossible that two people could uh, could know each other for any amount of time without somebody offending someone in some way, <laughs> accidental <laughs> or otherwise. It's you know, but, uh, accidental, though. Well, sometimes it's not. As I said, accidental or otherwise. See, verse 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And uh, that's really the most uh, incredible example of forgiveness. I mean, when you think about the crucifixion, Jesus did what he went through, you know, things like the Passion of the Christ really showed the details, the pain, the horrible beating, everything that he endured for us. And uh, you go to Luke 23, 34. What is Jesus saying to them? You're going to burn in hell? You're go we're going to get you're gonna get rid. You're gonna get. We're gonna get you back. That's not what he's saying, is it? Luke twenty-three, twenty-four. Thirty-four. Luke twenty-three, thirty-four. I was gonna say that I didn't do it. <laughs> then Jesus said, "Father, forgive them." For they do not know what they do. And these were the people who were who conspired and had this done to him. He forgave them. I mean, what an example of forgiveness. You know, uh, you know, we're not supposed to be seeking revenge on people who have wronged us. Who does revenge belong to? Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 32. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 35. Vengeance is mine and recompense. Their foot shall slip in due time, but they their calamity is at hand and the things to come hasten upon them. What it means is that 
and someone has done wrong, they won't get away with it, but it won't be because of you. It won't be because I had revenge on them. Now they will reap what they sow, but it's not going to be me. Giving it to them. It's not going to be me. He gives it to them. Revenge belongs to the Lord. Vengeance is His, it's not ours. So I guess what I'm saying is that we need to all think about it. Are there people that we haven't forgiven? You know, sometimes sometimes there, there are people I think I've forgiven and then and suddenly I think about it and then I start to feel angry again. Just something that I think we all need to uh, look at our own selves and think, do we forgive the way that Jesus did? Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for your love for us. That while we were yet sinners, you died on the cross for our sins. You forgave us for our transgressions. Lord, help us to be people who are willing to forgive just as you forgave us, Lord. We're not hurting anyone with our, angerness, with our anger and our bitterness other than ourselves. That's who we're hurting. Help us to give it all up. Help us to forgive. Help us to follow your example. If you could forgive us for all that we've done, then we have no excuse for why we refuse to forgive. That doesn't mean we trust everyone. There might be some people we can't associate with. But we can choose to not have bitterness in our hearts. We can choose to pray for those who've, who've wronged us. We can choose to not let anger and bitterness have that foothold in our life we can choose to forgive and lord help us all to be willing to make that choice i pray in jesus name amen